Hello folks, Jonathan Milam here. I hope you're having a good day. It is an ugly, gray, drizzly day here in what is usually beautiful Charleston, South Carolina. Uh, I've got six GR mouthpieces here. I'm gonna run through them all from the largest that I've got to the biggest. And uh, on uh, trumpet videos, which I usually do, I think I've got a little more than 200 videos of, most of them are trumpets, a few of them are singing, playing piano, a few of them are cornets, a few are flugelhorns, even less trombones, one I do a little bit of flute work on. But in uh, fact, I pulled the flute out a few weeks ago and tried to, uh, trying to work it back into shape. But anyway, um, with mouthpieces, always interesting. I've been very impressed with GR mouthpieces for about the last uh, six months or so. And um, the first one we're gonna go with, I'll try and show them to you on here. This is what they call their FD. That is a deep flugel. When I bought this mouthpiece, it had, I believe the uh, material is Lexon. I've got two of these that came this way, threaded on. And so uh, you can remove them and put metal, but uh, it's a perfect fit. Quite a deep flugel mouthpiece. In fact, it is the flugel mouthpiece that they use for the Con Vintage One, but it also, through their technology and sizing, it fits the trumpet. Now, when you look down into the cup of this mouthpiece, it still has um, uh, a faint V-type. I've got a uh, old, Trent Austin trumpet flugel that's much less uh, deep and a smaller drill, but Peter Pickett, I believe, was making those for Trent back in the day. But that one, when you look down, it actually goes like this. This GR still has a little bit of uh, meat to it before it gets into the uh, throat. Wonderful piece. What I'm gonna do with all of these, I'll just do a simple C scale, and then I'm going to um, play, it's, you know, it's usually an old gospel song. I'm an old guy. Old gospel song or an old musical. And I'm gonna to use today on the street where you are some nice jumps, pretty song. And, uh, but first we'll do a C scale to just give you an idea how the uh, mouthpiece sounds on its own. Well, gotta turn off the speaking mic, sorry. I'm using here a Carol Brass Giafredi trumpet, and um, I did want to no, uh, notice. I'm going to go. I'm going to jump. Of course, I'm jumping from a low D to a D, and then I'm jumping from an F to an E. I do not need to play the E one and two. This is one of the most in tune trumpets. I have ever played. A little hard to make that jump up with the flugel mouthpiece, but I'm going to do it again. Just want you to notice the great intonation on this trumpet. Okay, why would you use a trumpet flugel mouthpiece? Uh, a lot of times, if you've just got a line or two where they ask for a flugel and it's a, a casual uh, concert, a lot of guys will just slip in a trumpet flugel mouthpiece to give them that very deep sound as opposed to uh, dragging a flugel for uh, six or eight measures worth of playing. Okay, the next one I'm gonna go to is um, is a great mouthpiece. I really like this one. And it is their MB. I use a 64 RAM, which is equivalent to a Box 7, uh, a Warburton 6, 
And um, this is the MB. It is deeper than a 3C. Uh, in fact, I think considerably deeper, actually. But it's also hollowed out right under the lip here. They actually went several of these. They give good chop room. And this is definitely, it is a large cup for a medium. Gets a very, very nice sound. One of the... Uh, favorite mouthpieces, and it is their two back bore. In fact, the rest of these, the next three after this one, they're all two back bores until I get to one lead mouthpiece, the uh, 63Z Two Star. Okay, and this is then the GR64M-B. Excellent mouthpiece. Okay, the next, slightly shallower, uh, but still probably at least as deep as a uh, Bach 3, not quite as deep as a Bach 7C, but uh, as deep as a 3C. This is the MX. It's a medium with a little bit of extra depth to it, and I'm trying to show that as well as I can. This is the other one that came with a uh, uh, screw rim on it, and I've got a Warburton, uh, which I really like. Uh, a Warburton rim. It's a little bit rounder than the GR, which is, uh, to my way of thinking, slightly flat. Most people like the flat mouthpiece if they're playing a lot. I prefer a rounder one. But this is the M. It's a little bit more kind of a modified V than the MB, which is a deep cup, quite a bit like a uh, Bach B, actually. But this is the MX. It's a medium with just a little bit of extra room. Okay, the next piece we'll go to is their straight medium. Very much a medium, I would say. Um, most of these uh, that I've been using, the MB, the MX, and then this medium, definitely uh, strong bolds to them. The M is a bit more of a V, but um, no play with the throats which really changes when we get to the lead mouthpiece, but all pretty much a straight uh, entry into the throat. No relaxed throats at all. And so this is the GR64M, just their medium. pieces for a minute because they're cold. <laughs> okay, on the street where you are, live.
Okay, now the next one we're going to get to is a tremendous mouthpiece. Wayne Bergeron, when he switched to GR a few years ago, if you read on his website, uh, he said, it's just the fattest sound that I've had in a long time. Uh, when I played this, this is a medium shallow, the MS, GR64 MS. A little shallower than their medium, but still uh, quite a bit of chop room in there and a real strong uh, bowl type cup. But when I played this, I had a Adams A5, and uh, that is a very open horn, big bell, light bell. And when you played it with this, it was such a powerful match. When I first played it, I, I, I played, and I'm in a small room, and um, I thought, whoa, uh, brother-in-law upstairs is going to complain. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it puts out a really fat sound. It's not just a medium shallow, although it is an MS, but the, the core that you get with this mouthpiece, it's, uh, to my way of thinking, really, it's, it's an incredible piece. Just, to my way of thinking, an amazing mouthpieces. I've been trying to work with something a little, um, little deeper. I usually use the MB, a lot of chop room, uh, big sized cup for its depth, and um, I really like that. But uh, the MS is just, it's a, it's a powerful tool. Okay, this is a very interesting mouthpiece. I buy all of these used, I'm sorry, GR, but, um, I was raised semi-poor, and it's just hard for me to pay $335 for a mouthpiece. But if a mouthpiece is worth $335, these GRs are. That's the long and short of it. And if you have to pay $335 to get an MS, I think it's going to be worth every penny of it. Uh, if there is a mouthpiece worth that much, these are. This is a shallow piece, and it's very interesting because this one has a very relaxed throat and um, quite a sharp dip right after you get past the rim, a sharp dip in, then a very relaxed throat and uh, what a masterful piece. Now this one, it's the 63Z Two Star. Really like this. I'm not a lead player and um, you know if I play in churches, I've mentioned once or twice before, you get above the staff and they're, oh, you know, they're just not used to that. Of course, if the guitar wails up there, everybody's happy. But if a trumpet does it, you know, it's, it's uncalled for. <sighs> Wonderful piece. And um, this is the only one I've got that has the one back bore. All the rest of them have the two back bore. But you get into their lead pieces, and this is what you get. Okay, again, I'll give you a C scale to get the basic sound of it. Then we'll uh, play on the street where you live.
Okay, it is a lead piece. If you don't get much above the staff, how would you know it's a lead piece? So we'll do some glissandos. We'll go from F up to a high C at least, let you hear what it can do. Okay, the uh, Giafretti is a very powerful horn in the lower register. I'm not used to controlling it above the staff, but uh, what a great horn and what an <laughs> excellent mouthpiece. And this is the last of the six GRs that I've got. Again, it's their 63Z two-star wonderful mouthpiece if you like a lead application. And uh, doesn't seem to close off on me. Uh, yesterday I was doing a video with a Boxstrad uh, 19037 comparing it to the uh, Carol Brass Giafretti, and I took the um, took the Strad up to an F above uh, high C, and then I think I took the Giafretti up to an E, which we just hit as well. But um, uh, wonderful horn, wonderful horn, wonderful mouthpieces. Life is good. Here in the Milam household, I hope things are going well for you. Uh, if you have the ability, take care of yourself to the best of your ability and someone dare you.